Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. As, as we were reading our scriptures uh, through the week, through the Bible, uh, last week we uh, started in the book of Luke. And I read a passage of scripture here that got me thinking uh, on, a, on, a, on a track um, that I'm going to preach this morning. And aren't you glad when you read the Bible that God gets, gets you thinking about the scriptures? And I believe that's the whole reason God wants you to read the Bible, because it gets you thinking about Him and about the scriptures. <clears throat> and I believe that's the goal this morning, that our mind be stayed upon Him. The Bible says, He whose mind is stayed upon Him, He will set Him in perfect peace. Amen. How many wants to live in perfect peace? Amen. How many is living in perfect peace? I'm not yet. Amen. I, I still worry some. I still got some battles, some that I still uh, threat and fret about. Amen. But the more I get into God's word, the more I begin to think on God, the more my mind stays on God. Amen. And the more peace of God comes. Amen. I, ha I'm, I have not obtained the place in God where I'm thinking on him 24 hours a day. Amen, but I'm working on it. Lift your hand and say, I'm working on it. Amen, I'm working on it. And one way we do that is by opening up his scripture and reading his word. Amen. And so in the book of Luke, chapter 3, I want us to go down to verse 23. This is a verse uh, I want to look at this morning. Book of Luke, chapter 3, and verse 23. And this starts about the... Uh, um, ancestors of Joseph. The Bible said, verse 23, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. And I, I guess what stood out to me there, it's what's in parentheses, it says, as was supposed. And I thought, I, I looked at that and I read it and I said, well, that's pretty neat because he wasn't Joseph's son, but a lot of people seen him as Joseph's son, but he was about 30 years age, being as supposed the son of Joseph. But how many knows he wasn't the son of Joseph? Amen. Mary was born of a virgin birth. Amen. Not by Joseph. Not this time anyways. Amen. And, and the Bible said that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she was conceived of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the Holy Ghost was his father. But if you read down through these, this, the rest of this chapter, you'll read about the ancestors of Joseph, and you'll read some names that you recognize. I'm not going to do it for the sake of time, but you'll read some names that you recognize. You'll read about Amos. You'll read about Levi. You'll read about Joseph. you read about David. you read about Obed. you read about Moses. you read Judah, and you read Jacob, and Isaac, and Abraham. And then you go on down, and you read about Shem, and Noah, and Enoch. And then you read on sale, and it says Seth. Then the very last verse, verse 38, if you go to it, Becky, amen, you'll read down the very last verse of verse 38, and it says this. <laughs> I'll read the last part of it. And was the son of Adam, Seth, who which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So, I like, again, I like how, it, again, it says, was supposed the son of Joseph. He wasn't. In reality, he was the son of God. Like the first man Adam was, when we go back to the last verse, he said, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of who? Son of God. And this is where it got me thinking about the first man, Adam, and the second man, Adam. Amen. Jesus, amen. And, and it, then it took me to 1 Corinthians. Becky, if you want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting with verse 45. And it took me to 1 Corinthians, amen, where I began to talk about the first man, Adam, and the second man, Adam. Amen. Jesus, amen, was supposed 
as was supposed the son of Joseph, and it told the generation and the ancestors of Joseph, amen, and many names that we knew, amen, that stood out to us, amen, that the very last verse, and it, and it went all the way back to the beginning, and Adam, amen, which was the son of God. Now read in first, now read in first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, we'll go down, down to verse 49, and as, as so it is written that the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last man, a quickening spirit. Verse 46, how be it? That was not first which was spiritual, but that was its natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Verse 47, the first man is of the earth earthly. The second man is of the Lord, is from the Lord from heavenly. In verse 49, uh, 48, and it is earth, the earthly such that are that are earthly, and it is, and as is the heavenly such that are of heavenly. Now verse 49, and as we have been born of the image of the earthly, we also shall bear the image of the heavenly. First man Adam and second man Adam. Amen. I, I want to look at this just a few minutes this morning. Amen. About the first man and second man Adam. The first man was created from the earth. Amen. In verse 47, again, it says, from the, the first man was from the earth made earthly or, or from the dust because Generations chapter 2, verse 7 says, the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground. So he was born from the dust of the ground. Uh, uh, the creation of man, described in this passage of Scripture, Genesis 2, 7, said he was uh, made from the dust of the earth. He was formed in the dust of the earth. Uh, you look up the word formed, amen, translated, means uh, uh, to be forged from pre-existing material, amen. So Adam was made from material from the earth, from dust. He was forged and if you look up the word dust in the Greek Hebrew, it means apar, it's A-P-H-A-R, which refers to the common earth. And I looked at my, and I thought to myself, so God created man from the dust of the earth. Either he created man from the dust or he didn't, because men would try to tell you and many times that we were created from an ape. We wasn't created from an ape. Man would try to tell you about a Bing Bang theory that just happened, and that's where we came from. Men would try to tell you we come from a little tadpole in a river somewhere is how we started. But I'm going to believe what God said, that he created man from the dust of the earth. And also, I thought it was interesting, as I looked and I found that uh, scientists at the NASA uh, Ames Research Center have confirmed that all the elements and people can be found in soil. That's where we came from, amen, that's where we were born, amen, 1 Corinthians 15, again, verse 45, the first man, Adam, was a, was a living soul, amen, he became a living soul, God created, he was created in the image of God, Adam was, well, he was created in the image of God, Generations, uh, Genesis 126, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea. And, and the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. He was made in the image of God. Adam was created and formed out of the dust of the earth in the image of God. You turn to Genesis 5, 1 and 2, and it says this. And this is the book of generations of, A Abraham, of Adam. And the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. So they were created, amen, in the image of God, amen. Man was a special creation of God. He was made in his own image. He created male and female, amen, and he created them to work as his work, as his creation. Amen, Adam was created in his image, amen. He was free, he was spiritual, he was able to talk to God, amen, as he was walking in the, in the, in the uh, garden, amen. He was created as, as a free will, amen, to do what he wanted. He, had, he could choose to do what he wanted to do. He chose his actions, and his purpose was to have fellowship with God and to worship God in the garden. Adam was created perfect in the image of God by God. 
But then I read in Generation 3, in verse 3, 6, and it says this, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be, one des uh, to be desired to make one wise, Becky, if you're good with that, Genesis 3, 6. I want to leave it there just for a few minutes. Desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat. And Dud also gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. The Bible opens up with the creation of man and being created in God's image. And then sin shows up and messes up that image that God created. Amen. And I'll tell you something this morning. Disobedience to God's word not only affects you, but affects everybody around you. When you choose to do something that is wrong and that is not right and against God's word, it not only affects you, but most of the time it affects those who you love the most. Amen. This decision, this uh, uh, if disobedient, amen, that Eve did, not only affected her, but affected her husband, affected her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, and, 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 and every descendant since then, amen, because of one choice, amen. The, the, the problem with sin, it doesn't stop with just a choice, Amen. But with sin, there's consequences, amen, that we deal with because of choices that we make. I want to tell you something this morning. It's probably going to blow your mind. It didn't mind when I, when I, when I read this, this verse that Becky has up here, amen, I, and I began to read it. Amen. Probably one of the most uh, uh, devastating things in this verse here that I read is the word with. And I've never seen it this way before until I read this passage of Scripture. The Bible said Adam was with Eve. If we read this again, amen, it says, And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave to her husband. Where was he? With her. And he did eat. Now, make no mistake, amen, the woman was deceived, but Adam was not. You can read the first Timothy chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It says, for Adam was first formed, then Eve, and then Adam was not deceived, but the woman was being deceived by the transgression. Amen. So Adam wasn't deceived, but Eve was. But Adam was there with her. And I began to look at this, and I read it again, and I said, where was he? He gave it to her husband with her, and he did eat. And I thought, it, it, it can't be right. Maybe that was just the way the King James Version put it. So I began to read some other translations. I read the NLT version. It said, and the woman conceived, uh, convinced, and she saw the tree was beautiful, and the fruit was delicious, and she wanted the wisdom uh, that it would give her, and she took the fruit and ate it, and she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. I looked up another version, and it's called an ASV version. It said, and the woman saw the tree was good for food, and all this. And it said, and she gave also to her husband with her. I looked up another version, and it said, and she gave also to her husband who was with her. I looked up part of one of the easiest versions, amen, the common that we read is the easy, it's called the easy version. And it said, the fruit she gave, and she gave some of the fruit to her husband who was with her when she ate it. And that, that kind of blows my mind because I always pictured Eve going away from Adam somewhere, amen, going to the tree by herself, being deceived by the serpent by herself, amen, then going around finding Adam and giving him the fruit thereof. But that's, according to this, it's not the way it was. For she, he was there with her. When the serpent was tempting her, Adam was there with her. Amen. When they, she began to eat of the fruit of the tree, Adam was there with her as she began to eat. And he saw that it didn't do nothing to her, and she gave the fruit to him, and then he did eat. And he was, he was there with her. He willfully sinned. Amen. He, he, he thought there would be no consequences, but everything was upside down now. Amen. You see, he followed the snake, Adam followed Eve, but nobody followed God. 
He was there with her. First, back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, 13, Adam was not deceived, but the woman was and fell into transgression. transgression. Amen. Saint, Satan can't make a temptation unless he can convince us, amen, uh, that it's okay and deceive us, amen, with deception that it's not going to hurt us. Amen. He first had to convince Eve that it was okay and that it wasn't going to hurt you by adding one little thing to the scripture that God told him not to do. And she did it. Back to the first man, Adam. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, it says this, And the Lord, took, uh, and the Lord God took the man and put him into a, the garden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest eat freely there, there eat. Amen. Adam, you see, Adam and Eve had to retain, if they would have had re, uh, uh, retained their original state when God made them, they would have never died. Amen. But Adam and Eve yielded to the serpent's temptation. And then that's how death came into the world, through the first man, Adam. Death came into the world. Before this time, there was in a beautiful place, a pristine state, amen, a level above that we could not even imagine, amen. Uh, 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 if, we, if we look at our human race today, it's nothing close to where Adam was, amen, where Adam was created, amen. But because of sin and because of disobedience to the Word of God, first man Adam brought death into the world. Amen. It's difficult to imagine how, how he was before them. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so, and so death passed upon all men, for all that have sinned. For all have sinned. Because of one man's sin, we all have sinned. Because of one man, the first man, Adam, Amen. Yielded. Now we have to fight temptation. Now we have to fight, amen, against death, against the enemy because of one man. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 says, from, for, as Adam, for as in Adam all die because of the first man, Adam. You've got a day. You've got an appointment. You've got a place. You've got a time, and your name's on it. People keep, keep that appointment every day. There's three people every second, 180 people every minute that keep that appointment. 11,000 people every hour keep that appointment. 260,000 people a day keep that appointment. The past year, 95 million people have kept that appointment. I mean, you can't delay it. You can't deny it. You've got an appointed time once to die. And then after that is judgment because of one man, the first man, Adam. Amen. The first man, Adam, became a living soul. But then he, he did not give life, though. He brought death into the world because of one man. So we needed a second man, Adam. We needed a man to take, take Adam's place. Amen. Now, in 1 Corinthians, back if you go back to 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, and verse 47, it says, The first man is of the earth earthly, but the second man is is the Lord from heaven. First man is of the earth, but the second man is the Lord from heaven. Go back to verse 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made of the living uh, soul, and the last man Adam is, is as a quickening spirit. A quickening spirit. Amen. The first man Adam was made in the image of God with a choice to do what he wanted. He made the wrong choice, and it affected everybody from, then, from that time on. Jesus came. Adam was a living soul. And then Jesus came, was a quickening spirit. And he was the Lord from heaven, the Bible says. First John 1 and 4 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same in the beginning was with God. All things were made by him, and without him not anything made. That was made, for in him was life, and the life of, of, the, of men. Life is the light of men. You see, God was not the son of Joseph as this was supposed, as everybody thought he was. Amen. But like the first man, Adam, amen, that, and the last 
verse of chapter 3, amen, it said he was, Adam was the son of God. Like the first man, Adam, God came down on the flesh as the Word of God, as the Son of God, amen, to bring life back to us. Amen. He was not the son of Joseph, as supposed, amen, but he was the Son of God, or God Himself. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. And that's the second man, Adam, that came, amen, to give us those things. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 through 3, it says, And God had sundry times, and in divers manners spake, and times passed unto the fathers by the prophets. Hath in these last days spoken by his Son, whom hath appointed heir of all things, and by whom he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his, of his person, and appointing all things by the word of his power. And when he had by himself purged, what did he do? He purged, amen, our sins, and sat down at the right hand of the majesty of, uh, on high. Jesus came, amen, to purge of our sins that the first man, Adam, brought, amen, into our life. Because one man sinned, all of sin. Now because of one man, the second man, Adam, came, he purged us, amen, of our sins and gave us a way to escape us. Amen, I'm talking about the second man, Adam, now. He's our Savior, amen, our Redeemer, amen. He's the first man, Adam, amen. He's the one to give us life, to bring us, amen, a, a way of escape, amen, out of temptation. One man wrote this, and I liked it. Mary had a little lamb who lived before his birth. Self-existent son of God from heaven, he came to earth. He was sinless, without sin. He was in the image of God. He was God. Amen. Mark chapter 1, verse 13. He was there in the wilderness for, for 40 days, being tempted of Satan. Amen. You see, the Satan, amen, had tried to corrupt Adam and Eve, and he did, amen. Now that same tempter tried to come, amen, and uh, corrupt the second man, Adam, amen, in, in the wilderness, amen. Satan was uh, uh, trying to, to do like he did with the first man, Adam, amen, in the image of God. Amen. But he couldn't do it. Satan tempted the first man, Adam, in the garden, and he tempted the second man, Adam, amen, in the wilderness, amen. But there was a quite different results. Amen. Of what happened. Amen. Sin is consenting to and yielding to that temptation. Temp being tempted in itself is not a sin. Amen. But yielding to that temptation is when it becomes a sin. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. He was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was a second man, Adam. Amen. He came as a spotless lamb. Amen. Before for us. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 19. It says... For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. But by the obedience of one, the second man, Adam, shall we all be made righteous. I want to say that again. I want to read that again. Romans 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, we were all made sinners. But by the obedience of one. Lift, this, lift your hand up and say that one. His name is Jesus. By the obedience of one shall we all be made righteous. See, the second man, Adam, Jesus himself, came, amen, to make us righteous before him. Because the second, the first man, Adam, messed it all up. Amen. But the second man, Adam, came to make it all right. Amen. First man, Adam, we all sinned. But thank God, the second man, Adam, Jesus, amen, came and made a way of escape. Amen. Because he lived right, we too can live right. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21 and 22 says this. For since man came, for since by man came death. And by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For, verse 22, for as in Adam, all die. Even so, as in Christ, we are made alive. You see, first man, Adam, brought death. First man, Adam, we are born into sin and shaping in iniquity, like David said. Because of the first man, Adam, we all die. Amen. And headed to a devil's hell. But because of another man named Jesus Christ, he came that we may be made alive in him. 
Sin and death were brought into the human race by Adam as sin. But holiness and right living, amen, and things of God were brought into the world by the second man, Adam, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's two Adams. The first one brought death to mankind. The second man, Adam, Jesus Christ, brought life, amen, to those that would receive him. Two classes of people, amen, those that are outside of Christ under the penalty of death, and those who are in Jesus Christ, amen, and have eternal life, amen, and, may, and being made in the likeness of God on a daily basis. God made man in his image. And the second man came, and he, with the Bible said, he was God from heaven. And now God's trying to create in us another image, and it's the image of him, the earth, the world, amen, is trying to create an image, in, amen, that's not godly, amen. But God, amen, if you've got the Spirit of God in you, Paul said, I die daily, amen, meaning myself. I want to die daily, my wants, my desires, so I become more like God. I read this and I liked it. God formed you, sin deformed you. The Bible informs you. The blood of Jesus Christ can and will transform you. I like that. I want to say it again. God formed you. Then sin deformed you. The Bible informs you, but the blood of Jesus can and will transform you. So lift your hands on it this morning and say, Thank God for Jesus coming to restore back what the first man Adam st stole. Amen. Jesus came as a second man Adam. He was supposed to be the son of Joseph, but he wasn't. Amen. It was God himself coming to flesh as a second man Adam to restore back to you and I what the first man Adam lost. Amen. Lift your hands one more time. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. For coming as a second man Adam. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he's a mountain mover? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Say, he's a mountain mover. He moved my mountain. Amen. Ain't no mountain too big that God cannot move. Amen. If you've got a problem that's too big to solve, stop looking to me and start looking to God. Cause I know for certain there's not a thing you can do. Oh, but there's not a mountain that my God cannot move. Aren't you glad now? Oh, he's moved a mountain that God cannot move. And I've not seen a problem. He won't carry you through. So just call on the Master. And watch what he'll do for you. I've not seen a mountain that my God cannot move. Oh, sing it again now. Oh, I've not seen a mountain that God cannot move. And I've not seen a problem. He won't carry you through. So just call on the Master and watch what He'll do for you. I've not seen a mountain that my God cannot move. And I don't know your problems and I don't know the trials you face and I don't know God's will. But I know His grace, so just keep on climbing, and by faith understand, if He's not moved your mountain, you better believe that He can. Oh yes now, and I've not seen a mountain, that God cannot move. And I've not seen a problem. He won't carry you through. So just call on the Master. And watch what He'll do for you. 
I've not seen a mountain that God can all oh, lift your hands, sing it. Oh, I've not seen a mountain. You speak to the mountain. Oh, and it be removed. And I've not seen a problem. He won't carry you through. So just call on the master. And watch what he'll do for you. I've not seen a mountain that my God cannot move. He can say to your mountain, Oh, mountain, be removed. And it will vanish in a twinkling of an eye. Cause he sways the dead and five thousand souls for friend. Oh, what a mighty God that we serve. Hallelujah. And I've not seen a mountain that God cannot move. And I've not seen a problem. He won't carry you through. So just call on the Master and watch what He'll do for you. I've not seen a mountain that my God cannot move. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and His grace is free. And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Broken dreams and wasted years Until the past and disappear Let me tell you about my Jesus And all the wrong turns that you would Go and undo if you could Who can work it all for your good Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way when there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he Come on, can do it for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes Hallelujah. a way when there ain't no way. He rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about oh, my yeah. Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Who would take my cross to Calvary? Pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. 
who would take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. He would care that much about me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. He rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace oh, yeah. is free. Yeah. In the conditions, I know that he can do for you what he's done for oh, me. Let me tell you about my word. Jesus. He makes the way where there ain't no way. He rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is, I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. He rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah, 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 amen, amen. Oh, there's power, so much power. Oh, there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There's power, so much power. There's power in that name. Oh, there's power. Well, there's power. So much power. So much power. There's power in the name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power. Well, there's power. So much power. There's power in that name. Well, a man came unto Jesus. Said, Lord, I want to be here. My body's full of sores, but Lord, I want to live. Well, Jesus reached and touched him. His sickness went away. Just like you heal that pain, he'll take your pain away. Oh, there's power. Oh, there's power. So much power. So much power. Oh, there's power in the name. In the name of Jesus, there's power. So much power. There's power in that name. Oh, there's power. So much power. Oh, there's power in the name. In the name of Jesus, there's power. So much power. There's power in well, if you really know that the Lord has brought you through, well, you ought to stand up on your feet, tell the world I'm a witness too. Well, you ought to clap your hands and tell them there's no doubt. Through all my troubles and trials, Jesus brought you out. If you really know that the Lord has brought Somebody you through. Well, you, you ought to stand, stand up, up on your feet and the world I'm a witness to. Well, you, you ought to clap your hands and tell them there's no doubt. Through all my troubles and trials, Jesus brought me out. Oh, there's power, oh, there's power, so much power. Oh, there's power in the name. In the name of Jesus, there's power, so much power, there's power in that name, oh, there's power, so much power, oh, there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus, there's power, so much power. There's power in that name. Well, a man came unto Jesus, said, Lord, I want to be healed. My body's full of sores, but Lord, I want to live. Well, Jesus reached and touched him. His sickness went away. 
Just like He healed that man, He'll take your pain away. Oh, there's power, so much power. Oh, there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There's power, so much power. There's power in that name. Oh, there's power, so much power. There's power, so much power, there's power. 